All right, so I have this Dell Inspiron model 3147 that's been having a boot issue. So the customer brought it in. It doesn't turn on. Um, when I turned it on, I hear, I see the light flashing. I hear the hard drive spinning a little and then it shuts off and it just repeats that process. So here's what you do to fix it. So just remove all the screws. This is using a PH1 or a JIS1 screwdriver. Okay, so there's four along the back where the hinges are. Okay, there's three along the center, and then there's two more down here. So the cover, um, it's pretty simple to get off, but there are some clips that you have to pry up. So usually I just use my fingernails. You can use pry tools if you can't do it with your fingernails, or you can wait till your fingernails grow out and do this. So it also helps to have a suction cup, though you can use like a piece of tape or whatever, anything just to slightly pull up the case. Um, if you can, see what I can do is I can get my fingernail under here, but if you can't, if you can't get your pry tools or anything under there, basically take a suction cup, put it there, pull it, and then you can see the corner kind of lifts up. So here you can see the corner, you pull on it, there you go, it pulls up just like that. Okay, so I don't really need the suction cup to do this, but what you do is you pull on this, as you can see a gap will form here, and you just slide your pry tool or your fingernails along the gap, kind of pulling on it. I like to pull on it and push with my thumb on the bottom here to release the clips, just like that. Once you get those clips out, you hold, you pull this up and then you go along the side with your fingernail or pry tool, just like this, and it pops out. After you get these two sides, this one and this one out, you can kind of wiggle it as you kind of pull it and then these will come out. If you want, you can also slide the pry tool along this side like that, and there we go, and then it will pop out. So there we go, we got the cover off. So I'm gonna do a quick um, tutorial of what's inside. So you got the battery, we're gonna actually disconnect the battery. So let's take out the battery. There's three screws holding it. There's one here and one here. And then there's one down on the corner. Oh, my hand's blocking away, but one down in the corner here. Okay, so remove those three screws. All right, then you'll wanna be careful because this cable for the hard drive is connected here. So what I like to do is kind of just move it out of the way Make sure that it's no longer on top of the battery. Once you do that, you can use, well, wherever you can grab. And just pull the battery straight up like this. It'll go up at an angle. And then you can pull this out. Okay, so this is the battery. The model number is GK5KY. Okay, once you remove the battery, it's always a good idea to open it up slowly. Okay, and then press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds. This will reduce um, the chance of damaging the logic board or the motherboard if you happen to drop something on it or something gets shorted out. All right, it looks like there's some screws here, but um, or some missing screws. So I think the hard drive is supposed to have three screws. So there's supposed to be one here, uh, one underneath here, and then one up here. I'm gonna just quickly show um, this because this is something a lot of people are gonna be upgrading. The hard drive they're going to upgrade it to an ssd this is a two and a half inch sata you can put a two and a half inch sata ssd in there um, you're going to want to peel this adhesive off okay all right just like this okay and there's like a fabric kind of tape underneath all right so once you peel that up remove that other screw as well again i think there's supposed to be a screw here but it looks like somebody lost it or maybe it slowly fell out over time and i don't know where it went but anyways, that's how you get the hard drive out. You can lift this up. And then you want to disconnect this. If you want, you can take the whole connector off. I try and avoid taking these connectors off because sometimes they start getting loose and then it can cause problems. The computer won't start up anymore or it won't detect the hard drive if this thing comes loose. So what I do is I just go straight to prying off this. I get my fingernail in there. You can use pry tools or whatever. And then I just use that to kind of pull it wedge between and then kind of pull this connector off. So just like that, be careful not to damage this cable. And here you can see two and a half inch SATA hard drive. There's four screws holding it in, two on either side, All right? I'm gonna leave the hard drive in. Here you can see the keyboard connector here. I'm not gonna show how to take this out because I'm just fixing the boot issue, but there's these two little white tabs. You can just pull it back slightly. And after you do that, it can release the cable. Um, you got this cable here for the power button and the volume buttons, it looks like. You got this speaker here. The cable runs along to this speaker, and then it connects here. You got this cable. I'm not sure what that's for. I think it's for the charge port here. 
this charge port is kind of popping out, which is kind of weird. That shouldn't be happening, so maybe I need to take that out and fix that. Let's take this one screw out and see if I can fix that before it completely breaks. Okay, hopefully I don't end up breaking it trying to do fix it. There we go. So I just put it back in the slot properly, and then I'm going to put the screw back down. Maybe it's just going to pop out again, but whatever. All right. So it looks like there's two connectors here. So this connector actually connects, as you can see, MB, that's for motherboard, and then IO, that's for the input-output board. So this one connector here connects the CMOS battery, SD card slot, USB port, the power button, the, and the volume buttons, as well as the wireless card, if I didn't mention that already. All right. Uh, so yeah, this board's a separate board. Um, I forgot to mention the RAM. So there's only one stick of RAM here. Um, and it shows here DDR3L only. So this is 4 gigs PC3L 12800S. If you get, as long as you get the DDR3 12800S, you should be able to use any size. You can get an 8 gig stick if you want. Um, but yeah. All right. Everything else is soldered to the board. There's the LCD LVDS connector underneath here. Looks like there might be something else under here, but I'm not going to open it up and check. Maybe the touchscreen connector or the webcam connector. Okay, so back to the original issue. The computer was just black screening and it wasn't turning on. So what I did was I popped this. This is the CMOS battery. It stores like motherboard um, information for like the clock, the boot settings and things like that. So what I did is I popped that out. And then you can use any piece of metal but there's the gold contacts here so in here there's these spring-loaded gold contacts so when you push the battery in there it sticks in and then there's one down here and what I do is you take two screwdrivers or any piece of metal and then you want to just touch both of those gold contacts together and just hold it there for about 10 to 15 seconds okay that will drain any power from the CMOS or the BIOS or the whatever you want to call it the clock um, real-time clock settings okay um, if you leave this battery out or if this battery is dead and you turn on this computer the computer will beep five times repetitively so it'll beep five times it'll stop for a little bit beep five times and it'll just keep going the computer will actually start up even if the battery's missing but it'll keep beeping to warn you that this battery is actually dead or bad or it's not connected maybe if you disconnect this it'll also have that same beeping code but anyways, we're going to put the hard drive back. Um, you can also press, if that didn't fix it, you can try pressing and holding the power button another 10 to 15 seconds. You have to open the screen. Don't leave it closed like this. Otherwise, sometimes it won't detect that you're pressing and holding the power button. Okay. So once you do that, that should re reset the uh, any memory if there was a short or something in the board. I'm thinking maybe the screw came loose and was rolling around. That's Maybe that's why this thing is loose like this. And if that's the case, that could be what was causing it to not start up properly because the computer would just stay black. And yeah, as I said, I would hear the hard drive start spinning and then it would just shut off and keep power cycling like that. All right. So anyways, I'm putting this all back. All right, after that, you put the bottom back in like this. Make sure the hard drive connector doesn't get smashed by the battery. Okay, you do have to kind of move it out of the way. Again, if you want, you can pull this tab out. Usually to get these out, I pull the tab and then I use my finger underneath to kind of pop that up. But uh, I don't like taking those out because these connectors are kind of fragile, as I said earlier. So I'm just going to put back the screws for the battery now. Once you get it all lined up, you want to push this down to make sure that the pins underneath this sticker are all seated properly. Okay. Once you do that, just put the screws back in. Okay. And if you're lucky, if it was just a temporary short like this one had, then your computer will start up just fine. So you might have to plug it in. I don't know. Um, I'm going to try and turn it on because I think last time I just plugged it in without trying to do it without plugging it in. So let me see. It might just turn on without plugging it in. So now just snap back all these pieces. Make sure it's all lined up. Go all the way around. Snap those back. Okay. Make sure the corners are also snapped in. They're kind of sometimes a pain. 
if it doesn't go back in you might have to pull it back up and then do the corners first usually you want to do the corners first but I kind of messed up with that okay so do that there we go here we go you want to usually do the bottom corners first to make sure everything's snapped in and now I'm just gonna put back all the screws make sure that they're nice and tight okay just like this all right so we got that then we get the three in the middle and then the two in the bottom corners but that's pretty much all there is to this hopefully this video helped you guys if it did please like and subscribe help others find my videos Thank you for watching. I'm going to start it up after I get this last screw in just to make sure. If it doesn't turn on, I'm going to go get the plug, but I think this model didn't require me to plug it in. It just Once you reset the CMOS or the BIOS, it takes a little while for it to start up the first time. All right, so let's see. I'm going to open it up. You can see there's the little LED on this side here. So if I push the power button and it's working, that should light up. Yep, it's lighting up. I don't know if you, oops, I don't know if you can see it. There's too bright. But there you go, the screen's on. And this hopefully will start booting Windows by itself. If it doesn't boot Windows by itself, you might have to press F2 to go into the BIOS and then select the boot device. Um, but yeah, other than that, thanks again for watching. Hopefully this video helped. Please like, subscribe, check out my other videos. I do a whole bunch of these. These are all customer computers. I don't own any of these, but here you can see it's completely on. But yeah, again, I don't own any of these computers, so most likely if you have questions on specific to the model, I won't have it. I'll try to answer it, but usually a lot of times if it's something simple, I'll probably ask you to use Google because Google's very useful, and you can also help others um, with the answers you find. All right, thank you for watching. See you in another one. Bye.